I think so. Hey. It's episode <laughs> yeah, sure. 23 of Alex and Jim's. I'm settling down. We've done the show for a while. Of <laughs> Alex and Jim. Alex and Jim. Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Yeah, that's what we do on this show. And uh, as my friend Tom said, my friend Tom was listening to an episode of ours, and he's decided he's for sure going to listen to any of uh, the episodes about anything on an innocent man. He'll listen to those for sure. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Good album. And so he, we got it for like 10 episodes. Yep. And or nine, was, nine? I'm not sure. Probably 10. And he was listening to uh, the episode we did about easy money. Uh huh. And he said his favorite line was that at some point we asserted that the problem with this song is that at one point it sounds too much like Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. That was the, the problem. And it's funny because <laughs> taken out of context, it does feel absurd, but I stand by our... Oh, yeah. No, he was clearly doing a character that wasn't Billy Joel, and then he slipped. Yeah. Slipped I guess... Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, it it shouldn't suddenly sound like the '70s, which is what it did. It did right. like '70s Billy Joel, <laughs> right? Which uh, I gotta say, upon reflection, late '70s, early '80s, but late '70s is, I guess, my favorite Billy Joel. Uh, okay. Overall, I think so. Uh, okay, I support you. Um, I think it's the most Billy Joel, for sure. Um, I think I might go to the early 80s for myself. That also great, yeah. Glass Houses, I think, is pretty much peak. Well, because I said late 70s, early 80s, and I love Glass Houses as well, yeah. Which I think was 80, wasn't it? Or was yeah. 81, maybe? And if it's 80 yeah. or 80 or 81 doesn't, it's sort of still the 70s in the way that things go, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because the decade it, doesn't really become its own self. Yeah, and definitely the 80s, had, the 80s hadn't emerged yet in 80 and 81. It wasn't the nonsense that it became. It's true. Every decade kind of works that way, though. Yeah. Where it's like, when you go, the 60s, what you mean is 68 and 69. Yeah, that's true, yeah. When you say the 70s, it's like, well, 74 to 76, really. Yeah, and you're right. Because started later. Early, yeah. like, early 60s is these boy band, these. If you look at anything from the early 60s, it's, you're like, though, this is the mid 50s, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, not yet. And the only thing you'll say is that makes it the 60s, not the 50s, is this is like the 50s, but bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of guys with it man it's all i guess every musical genre goes through this it, you start out with the, the artist and then it's guys with haircuts right because the early 60s is all crooners terrible music for the most or at the very least some of it's fine music but it's all three minutes <laughs> yeah and it, it's all of that junk and again to just to billy joel's credit he belongs to no decade, really. He's no. Billy Joel. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. He is just uh, outside of time. Yeah. And fashion. Yeah. Uh, anything that <laughs> you can't pin him down. They should make, he's outside of time. They should make a new British show that's like Doctor Who, only it's Billy Joel. <laughs> yes. And he travels through time on a motorcycle. <laughs> And then they get a new Billy Joel and they're like, oh, I can't believe they got a lady Billy Joel this time. Great. I'll, I'll watch one or two episodes of that. Damn, I will watch every one and I'll be mad, but I'll watch it. <laughs> I watched the first one and I was like, and I had never seen Doctor Who at all. So I watched the first episode of the one with the lady and I was like, oh, this is a bad show. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. And also it's bad and the monster is super fakey. Yeah. Um, which I uh, now I know is part of the shtick. But if you're not in on the ground floor. Doctor Who's weird. What's this podcast about? <laughs> 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 uh, 
So this is uh, the song I picked this week uh, is Big Shot. A and, song you talk about a lot. And yes, and it's and it occupies a place in my heart and in my stand up act. I talk <laughs> about it a lot. And, and then it's in it's a song I used to make a joke about how Billy Joel seems like a guy who's impersonating a guy who rocks. Right. But he himself doesn't rock. But you know what? I was listening to the song and I'm like, ah, eh, maybe you're just a judgmental prick. Jim, this is a pretty rocking song. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty rocking. I'm still right to a degree because I the point I'm making is valid, but yes, you're right. You're more right in other songs. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> maybe the reason I picked this song too is because it sticks out like I'm making as much effort to rock as I can. And that seemed really funny to me. And it still seems really funny to me. <laughs> I think you picked it because of the funny voice. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Which is your favorite thing. Or you to be, at least. Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. It's still funny. And, and also, it's not like when it happens, I laugh in the moment. No. It, it works. And it's just when I think about it and how goofy like, it is uh, that they must have i feel like every song you go in the studio you do it 20 or 30 times yeah and did he go big shot every time <laughs> or was it like the 25th time and they were all super tired and punchy and then some idiot said we should keep that in yeah <laughs> or is it or how great would it be if all the outtakes were just Different accents because they before they settled on, <laughs> and then it's somebody said, be a big show, day," eh? and you're like, "No, no, yeah. the, the Indian one is racist. <laughs> we can't release this." <laughs> yeah, your Rasta voice, oh God, I'm all kinds of offended. <laughs> Maybe the whole song was supposed to be in an Italian accent, and he just got tired. Right, <laughs> <laughs> that's more fun. Yeah, and yet it's so fun to make fun of the song. It's so fun to be silly about it. But I love this song. It's it a, does rock. Yeah, it's a, it definitely uh, in your car. This is a perfect song. Oh yeah, so much of Billy Joel is better when you have privacy, <laughs> <laughs> um, and no one knows that you're listening to Billy Joel. <laughs> you can really be yourself. Um, so we've we've surrendered that. Oh privilege. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I it's funny to me. So I'll tell people that I have this show, and it was just an idea I had, and I just said it to my friend Alex, and I was like, oh okay, cool. There's a second person who doesn't think this is insane to do this. Oh no, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> but I, fun. I am just delighted at how many people are like, oh, I'll listen to that. I'm like, and even some of them who aren't Billy Joel fans per se, they're just like, oh, the idea of listening to two old idiots nattering <laughs> about, oh, I'll do that. How many, how many chances do you get? No, not nearly enough in life. Not nearly enough. 23 so far. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine, Kyle, who listens to the show, he recommended a video that I'm going to link to after I put this up oh. to Huskies singing along to Piano Man. <laughs> it's a pretty good video. I will fucking watch the shit out of that. Yeah. And what's great about it is it's these two Huskies and they like the song. A lot of times you're like, <laughs> Do they like it or hate it? No, no, they like it. That's why they go. Aah! And it's, it's so great. But this, whoever has these two Huskies also has a German, uh, no, a Golden Retriever. They have ah. a Goldie. And they pan over to the Goldie, and the Goldie just looks like, I wish everybody would be quiet. <laughs> not hollering at all, because they're just a different kind of dog. They're like, I like it when we're quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to hear the song, man. Yeah, can't we quietly listen? Which, yeah, now when I think about it, they're just like people. There's the idiot singing along, and the other one is like, I want to hear Billy Joel. You be quiet. <laughs> ah. So I went ahead and picked this song, and uh, I'm going to start into the lyrics. And uh, 
Hey, song. what album is this on? Oh, uh, let's see. Why can't I remember? Uh, what? Uh, let's see if those are all on lyrics. Uh, Not Stranger. I can't place it for some reason. Normally, I'm good at that game. Well, let's. I'm gonna Google look it up. It. Google it. Is it Fifty Second Street? 1978, and it is on. Yep. Nice job. Oh, good. So, yeah. I haven't lost it completely. No, this is, uh, and he is a big shot uh, carrying a horn for some reason and making people mad. Ah, yes. The best. Or really just one friend of ours who's just unreasonably mad, and it's pretty great. Just for uh, everyone's edification, this is what my mother thinks a text is. <laughs> wow. Hey, I'll get back to her. Wow, what the hell does she think an email is then? This just must be go on for days. She uh, is has been writing me one email since she got her computer and she's not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Typing for 23 years. Yeah. <laughs> she's got an assistant now. <laughs> assistant. She uh, uh, is a corporation, she incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> so in so to this song's credit we dive in right away there ain't a lot of nonsense it uh it gets right into what the song's about i even mean musically there's not a lot of yeah there's not a lot of front there's a it's heavy guitar at the, the beginning uh one uh a fully appropriate rock and roll scream yeah even I think pulled off. I think he even pulls off that screen. Uh, I think you're right. The video for this, by the way, he's wearing a cap like he's a newspaper. I I know that he's not dressed up. It just looks like he's a guy who sells newspapers. Oh no, I've never but seen a video for this. It's not too bad, but it's a dumb cap, and maybe people loved it at the time. It might be one of those things that, in context. I think you mentioned all clothes look dumb pretty quickly. Yes, especially those caps, which yeah. were very hot in the 80s, I remember. Yeah. I think I had one in college for a week and a half until someone fired me. There was that cap, there's a band, um, it's the band where they replaced the lead singer because he died and the new lead singer looked almost the same. Um, ACDT. Yes. AC that guy wears that cap, but it always looks good because he's always in a costume. Yes. And he's also from a culture where a lot of dudes wear that hat. Yeah. But he, uh, but you know, when you see him on the street, you'd like be surprised if he was dressed that way because it looks like he takes out the I'm a schoolboy in England costume. <laughs> yes. And I still haven't started the lyrics. All right. <laughs> Now, here we go. Well, you went uptown riding in your limousine with your fine Park Avenue clothes. You had the Dom Perignon in your hand and the spoon up your nose. That's perfect. That's right? perfect. It starts with well, like a lot of good rock songs. Yeah. Um, I, we ain't cliched either necessarily, really. It's, not really, not at the time. It's a thing that happened, and I'm certain he was writing about either somebody bad at a party, or he was like, how can I yell at myself? <laughs> I'm going to do that, because, man, I've been... It is uh, quintessential, because uh, he's, already he's acting superior to someone. Yeah. He has a lot of disdain for someone else's behavior. Yeah. Uh, at least ostensibly, if he's not talking about himself. Indeed, yeah. Um, and yeah, he, you fucked up. I'm smart, and you're dumb. And he he nails this person pretty great as far as just yeah, it telling us exactly who they are, which is great. Um, when I first heard the song as a younger person, yeah, I didn't know what the spoon up your nose was. Oh, okay. So I thought it was about someone just acting really crazy. <laughs> with an actual spoon <laughs> up their nose. 
And I didn't know what Dom Perignon was either. I assumed it was booze of some kind, but I was like, oh, this person like fucking gets drunk and <laughs> puts utensils up their nose. Yeah. No wonder he's annoyed. <laughs> and you know what's funny too? You may, oh, that's hilarious. You just cramming, hey, it's me, Spoon Man. And you know, like, ah. Yeah, yeah. And then that's why that other band wrote Spoon Man. It's about the same guy. <laughs> it was the inspiration for uh, Forky, wasn't it? That's right, Forky. Would beloved now, at the time, Mr. Sure. Good. Forky, was. right? But after his death, after yeah. his death at the hands of uh, MS13, right? <laughs> oh <laughs> Lord, you have, uh, to, you have to love him. I will finish this whole verse, and you get the second one. Okay. Uh, I so first of all, spoon up your nose, Don Perignon. Uh, it's good because if you just mention cocaine. That's neither high class nor low class. That's just drugs people are doing. True. If you contextualize them with Don Perignon, I like the fact that you're immediately letting me know these are the fancy idiots who think they're great, who their their version of drugs is, is look how outrageous I am, but in general, they're they're the status quo. So there right. are those jackasses that I are right. justifiably reviled, <laughs> uh, and uh, or also potentially this is somebody coming up who wants to be them. So they ride in a damn limousine because they want to be fancy. They got clothes that maybe they can't even afford, because I think it's probably a little more of that too. Yeah. Um, and when you wake up in the morning with your head on fire and your eyes too bloody to see. Great. That's great. And this next lyric might be my favorite just because it's so uh, mean and like, you, <laughs> and you'd say it to somebody like you wouldn't just say it to somebody in a song. Yeah. I could see saying this to somebody. Yeah. You know, I could see me saying this to Paul after he'd gotten real drunk. And and the next day he realized that he whatever or him saying it to me, which wouldn't happen because no. he would have thought what I did was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, many times I was horrible at a party and later on, he thought, oh, God, you remember that time you set the thing on fire? That was great. Uh, that was, everybody uh, hated you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And your eyes too bloody to see. And there's the lyric. Go on and cry in your coffee, but don't come bitching to me. That's great. That's good advice. Everything uh, in that lyric, I think, works really well. It also helps the relationship because obviously there's he's still around in the morning. So this is um, I feel like it's a shitty out of control girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> that he's mad at. Yeah. I, we were having a nice time out on the town and then you uh, went crazy and yeah. ruined everything and I don't like you. Yeah. But yeah, no, no remorse, no mercy. Yeah, that's like, great. Oh, do you feel okay? To, do you want some aspirin? It's like, no, continue to fuck you. Oh, your, your head hurts. You need me to be quiet. Nope. I'm yelling at you. <laughs> yeah, I think we like uh, it, how mean he is. I do, yeah, I yeah. Because I think in a lot of songs, he is mean, but doesn't think he's being mean. Yeah. Or is uh, unconsciously uh, spewing disdain yeah. for something. But this is very targeted. <laughs> <laughs> There's no half-assedness about how much he dislikes this person. Yeah, and the music and the lyrics are a perfect match. Yeah, there's not the music you would want to go with your hangover if you were this person. Yep. Also, so I want to say the music is mad at the, the person. And I want to say it right now, if I'm if I'm correct, there's not really any middle part change that he sometimes does that I don't always love. I don't think so. This is just yelling at you. <laughs> just yelling at you for a long time. Yeah, and there's no middle part that makes it that disrupt. Yeah, I. It just dawned on me. I like the song partly because I, I'm never disrupted from what I like about the beginning of the song with the weird middle that changes tempo. No, it just keeps chugging. Yeah. It is sort of a chugging rhythm. Yeah. 
um, I'll do the next thing. Because you had to be a big shot, didn't you? <laughs> you had to open up your mouth. You had to be a big shot, didn't you? All your friends were so knocked out. Oh, he hates her friends too. Oh, well, we've all been there. You had to have the last word last night, which I really like. Yeah. You know what everything's about. You had to have a white hot spotlight. You had to be a big shot last night. I love big shot. I know he's Jewish, but it, it, maybe it's a Jewish thing too, but it's a Jewish Italian New York thing for parents to use that to curse out their kids. Yeah. Oh, you're a big shot. You think you're a big shot? All right, big shot. <laughs> yeah. And to this, like that exists outside of time as well. Like they never thought of a better thing to call their shitty kids. <laughs> Like 1940. Yeah, they I, big shot. You like your virtual reality goggles, eh? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, my big shot. I get. I think the difference between the Italian and the Jewish iteration is if your dad calls you a big shot, he wants to see if you want to fight him. If you're Italian, yes. And if your dad, Jewish dad, calls you a big shot, he's disappointed. He doesn't like how. Yeah, that the thing you bought was too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh am i canceled oh no don't cancel me culture yeah come on uh come on. i've often said about cancel culture you know it doesn't exist because we're in the united states we have no culture so it couldn't possibly exist <laughs> loophole <laughs> uh, uh, it is very repetitive yeah all the things you know it's very sarcastic yeah um, your your friends were so knocked out. Yeah, which, I like uh, I like to. You had to open your mouth is like one of the first things, which means to whoever this person is, whenever they're at a party and this person is about to talk, he's like, oh, "Come on, just don't do the thing you do." Ah. Oh. Here it comes. Oh boy, not the spoon trick. <laughs> not the spoon. Don't do the spoon. Oh God. Uh, it was a good magic, good magic tr trick once. All right. So let's <laughs> let's flip. You do this next one and then I'll do the uh, oh, right. the That's emergence right. of the chorus. Ah yeah. Uh they were all impressed with your Halston dress. Nice syllables. Yep. And people that you knew at Elaine's. I'd love that because <laughs> Immediately, we are, we are now are back in the era, and this does not exist outside of time. Right. Um, you had a Halston dress, which is, I don't know how many people know about Halston as a designer. They're about to make a movie starring Ewan McGregor. Oh, okay. As Halston. Um, but beyond that, you don't hear that name much anymore. No. And if you go to Elaine's, it's uh, a tourist trap. <laughs> it's not a cool place to go yeah and the story of your latest success kept them so entertained but now you just don't remember all the things you said and you're not sure you want to know i'll give you one hint honey <laughs> Which I love. you sure did put on a show suddenly he's like uh your older gay friend <laughs> One hint, honey. God yeah. Bless. So sarcastic, too. And he's chopping at the bit to tell you the worst thing you did, but he's waiting. He's going to unfold. <laughs> yeah, yes. He's going to wait until your, your hangover's almost gone. Yeah. He might even wait until, like, like say, your buddy that you really offended calls you. And he goes, <laughs> why is... Why is Jeremy mad at me? Oh, that's a good story. Yeah, you'll want to hear this. Uh. <laughs> uh, he's, he is taking joy. And I think we've all been there. He is taking joy in the fallout because yeah. probably he just suffers at this dumb party. I will even go as far as I think we've all taken joy in somebody else's hangover when they were shitty at a party. Oh, yeah, for sure. 
um, we've all had roommates and you're like this fucking guy all night and now he's miserable. So uh, years ago, and is coming. You like cook some weird smelling food. <laughs> is, that weird? Uh, is that bothering you? Sorry, Bunga. <laughs> I was just, yeah, I was just in the mood for boiled cabbage. I just had a I had a hankering. Just yeah. had a hankering. You want uh, some? Yeah. Yeah. I uh one time I got real, real drunk on tequila and I was at a party and I was hilarious. <laughs> it was very funny and then it was one of the first times i'd ever had tequila and oh. uh i was just belligerent and non-stop and stumbling and everything and a thing that i noticed was i fell onto something and whacked my shoulder and it didn't hurt <laughs> i was like oh that's great and so i said to somebody hey hit me and they hit me a little bit and it doesn't hurt and i said to this dude i said and this guy was annoyed with me. I said, hey, uh, hey, hit me. Uh, I, I can't even feel it. And he hit me like this. He went like hard because he was <laughs> fucking irritated with me and it hurt. And it kind of woke me up a little bit. So I started to stop doing that bit. Do you know who <laughs> the dude was? No. I'm going to say Graham Elwood. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> It was me. It was so funny, and you were right to do it because oh, you're not like great. you hurt me. You just were like, "It doesn't, huh?" Because <laughs> <laughs> I was running my mouth and running around, and oh yeah, you're a very physical drunk. <laughs> Indeed, and oh, you know, good for uh, me. It was just—it's a fine. It's funny. I don't remember a lot about that night. I remember <laughs> that. I remember that. Oh my God, that's great. <laughs> it was probably helpful because probably you don't do that. Then the next thing I know is who are those eight guys who rolled me? Right, yeah. I'll, I'll go bother these gangbangers on the way home. Yeah, just bother your friend who's trying to get through college without being fucked. <laughs> so uh, that was, yeah. So I've been, I've been on both sides of that story. Um, great. Uh, now is this the um i th i think we're italian right now right um yes yeah, yeah 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 i think this is oh well i don't know if it's here it's definitely later oh, but it may yeah. also no no it isn't quite here no you're it's not quite here um i think and we'll both get to there and enjoy it but yes yes you had to be a big shot didn't you you had to prove it to the crowd. I like how it's different enough from the first thing that just really makes me clear this is an experience he had. Yes. Because, man, he's pissed off at this moron, whoever they were. And he probably loves them, and they're normally – and they can be great, but that sure. makes it worse. But you can really turn loose on somebody like that. Yeah. You had to be a big shot, didn't you? You had to prove it to the crowd. You had to be a big shot, didn't you? All your friends were so knocked out. You know, it's funny. That doesn't exactly rhyme, in it, but it's good. because he's <laughs> true. You had to have the last word last night. So much fun to be around. <laughs> yeah. You that's had great. to have the front page bold type. And really, that's, I don't want to say hot spotlight again. And it's a good substitution. Fantastic. It's the same idea. You had to have the front page bold type. You had to be a big shot last night. Whoa. -whoa. And then <laughs> we get into that part. Oh, yeah, there's a little whoa, whoa bridge. I guess there is, a, but it fits. It's not like one of those disruptive bridges. True. It's a little accordion. Yeah. There's an accordion in there. It's like just crazy enough to <laughs> work. Yeah. You're like, what is happening? Oh, oh he's yelling at me again. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. And by this time, if the other person was talking, they would their lyrics would just be, I know you told me. I know. I, I told you I feel terrible. I'm just gonna lay down. Why also please don't play the accordion. Yeah. Can we just <laughs> can, I, can I pause everything for one moment? Yes. Because I got home so late and I've not ordered food. Oh yeah. 
order some food. Would the viewers like to watch me order food? No, oh, that'd be fun. This will be sure, something order. Do you want some Sambo? Detroit pizza. Oh boy, pretty heavy. Pizza sounds good, doesn't it, folks? Let's do it. Same? Yeah. Your usual? All right, let me get on the seamless. <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> then I gotta scroll back to the last time we ordered Detroit pizza, which is not as long ago as you think. Now, as Alex uh, orders pizza, I'll let uh, folks in on the secret about Jim. Jim had Thanks. pizza recently and realized, oh, pizza's not something he can have very often. That's oh, yeah. Um, Alex in the same boat. Yeah. What That's I did every too, two weeks. <laughs> what I did too is a thing I've got to just stop doing, period, which is ordering a pizza for myself. Oh, yeah. See, I'm fine because she made me do it. Yeah. I and was getting not, a salad. And you're not going to eat the whole thing. Well, I might <laughs> because it's Detroit pizza and it's like not quite single servings, but pretty close. It's square. But Sue will eat some of it, right? Oh, yes. Well, we're getting two, but yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. Look, um, not all my decisions are smart. Because I will order a full-sized pizza still, like I'm in my 20s, and go, here's what I'm eating all of. Oh, no. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, so I've, I've stopped, I think I've stopped doing that. <laughs> Pizza's on the way. Yay. Yeah, that was ordering pizza in New York, just like you can imagine Billy Joel doing. Very easy to imagine. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine him. It's hard to imagine him not ordering a pizza. Would he order Detroit pizza? I wonder. He might. He likes uh, motor cars. Yeah. And Motown. He does. Hey, let's <laughs> split this up. I'll do the first part, and then you get to do the Italian part. Um, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it, well, it's no big sin to stick your two cents in. I've always liked that line a lot. Really great, especially the way he sings it. There's a lot of bile in it. Yeah. Well, it's no big sin to stick your two. Yeah, it's great. If you know when to leave it alone, that's a nice phrase. Leave it alone. That's a great leave it alone. Yep. It's not stop. It's not shut up. It's it's a very it's a very specific way to say that, which also feels very uh I don't know, Italian, doesn't it? Uh, at least New York y. At least New York, yeah. Leave it alone. But you went over the line, you couldn't see that it was time to go home. Um, really a thesis sentence and those two lines he sings sort of very high and angry yeah and it is sort of the whole point yeah you went over the line and you couldn't see it was time to go home is what I'm getting at yeah and then full mockery and that, now thinking about it humanities if, a, if your roommate's doing this in your house lord <laughs> you're he's just going at you yeah no, 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 no. You had to be a big shot, didn't you? <laughs> you had to open up your mouth. You had to be a big shot, didn't you? All your friends were so knocked out. You had to have the last word last night. So much fun to be around. <laughs> you had to have a white hot spotlight. You had to be a big shot last night. And then I like the the way it trails off with him just repeating big shot and like even the guitar is sarcastic. Yep. Like big shot. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Oh, yeah. Sarcastically like playing a guitar solo at you. It's funny, I've never thought about it this way, but in analyzing the lyrics, I think we actually are doing our job, right? We're actually analyzing the lyrics. I think we are. Because I never it's really leading thought- leading us to analyze the music as well. Yeah, because I never really thought about how I enjoy the silly voice, but in context, it's wholly appropriate because he is ridiculing this person. Yes. And we've all done that. Like the version we've done, you've all done the version of like, you know, your room is like, oh, you were so great last night. Hey, I'm going to play their bongos and break them. And you make, you know, uh -huh. 
hey, let's throw the football in the house. Nothing shitty will happen. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. There's sometimes you, yeah, your regular voice uh, can't handle the load. Hey, I know what I'll do. I'll bring up Gary's dad at a party. <laughs> uh, it's true. Uh, I am good at imagining uh, different uh, inappropriate things people might have said. Said a lot of them. You're very good at imagining uh, how people might yell at you, too. <laughs> I. I said imagining but i think i might mean remembering <laughs> <laughs> oh i oh, thinking about uh, that was like yeah yeah My very funny taking your dick out and putting it on people that was great <laughs> i'm so glad you did that how do you think of that oh you're 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 a clever renaissance man with your wiener god it was very funny that you made your butt talk <laughs> made a piece of paper with it Wait, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of an actual thing that Paul Goebel did at a, at a party that we were at that wasn't a party at all because there were four of us and we were playing that stupid game. Oh, yes. Yes. Oppression. Oppression. And now, do you have fond memories of playing that game because you were good at it? I mostly do. Yes. It was very fun. We thought we were geniuses who invented it, which was great. Yeah. Um, we invented the idea of fucking around and being stupid. <laughs> just the tiniest premise. Um, I hated the treatment. Oh, yeah. If you made an error, we should tell the, the nice people. Uh, if you made an error in this game, um, you would get something called the treatment, which yeah. was everybody sort of making fun of you. Uh, and then it became everybody like touching you. Yeah. Then it became Paul Goebel talking with his butthole. His actual naked butthole. Yeah. Making yeah. fun of you. Yep. That's this not was, a long memory. Now, to his credit, this was before Jim Carrey did it. Yes. So Paul was ahead of his time. <laughs> he was. And then he stopped. And now he's uh, way, way behind. Yeah. yeah exactly. He's not exactly <laughs> uh, we have a friend. Do you remember Aaron? You remember Aaron Passmore, right? Yes. Of course. So, he, skateboard he, Aaron? Huh? Skateboard guy? Yeah. Uh, he would do, we liked his Granny Clampett impression a lot. <laughs> yes. They're really good. <laughs> but he eventually got tired of doing it. So his solution, I think, was truly brilliant, which is he would do something extremely unacceptable in the impression as Granny Clampett so that eventually you would stop asking. It worked. It's very smart. My favorite, yeah. and then we'll, that virus. Yep, yeah, my favorite, and then we'll go back to the show. Is one time so it was somebody's birthday, and he's Granny Clampett, and there's a birthday cake that has somebody's had maybe half a piece of it. There's the whole birthday cake, and oh, he no. comes in, he goes something, something is Granny Clampett, and he takes the cake and just smashes it on the carpet. <laughs> oh God, he um. Was ahead of his time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, I, the one thing I remember about him is I used to drink those canned iced teas and it, they were called brisk. Yes. Lipton brisk. Um, and that was my thing while everybody else was drinking sodas. Sure. Uh, and he thought that was uh, gay. Uh, <laughs> it was a different time. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it was a lot of him going, oh, you drinking your brisk, huh? You like the brisk? Hey, bring me. And then one time I was drinking one and he just walked across the room and launched himself into the air and crashed down upon me. Whoa. Just like uh, WWE style body slammed me while I was drinking a brisk. <laughs> now he weighed like 74 pounds, so it wasn't so bad. <laughs> but um, I remember it. Yeah, oh, that's oh, well, it's such a weird game. <laughs> game. <laughs> the, I, so the way the game worked for you folks at home, if you'd like to play, is <laughs> you write an idea for an impression you'd like to see somebody do, put it in a hat, and then other people pull it out. You can't do your own impression, and you can't guess your own. And the person has to do the impression, but the impressions are always 
either they're absurd or they're puns like yeah. like ray romano cheese for example if you were doing ray romano right and uh you would go oh, i can't believe i'm on this guy's pizza and you need somebody else to guess it right Debra. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> or or something absurd like uh you know Captain Kirk uh, giving himself a lobotomy or whatever. And you go, okay, well, what would that look like? That's not a good one, but. Yeah, but there were a lot of ones that were not good. Exactly. It's a perfect example because the game was often interminable, but when it was good, yeah. it was great. What happens when you don't? This is before video games, you guys. Yeah. I remember two nights when I'd be like, I think we just played that for seven hours. What's going oh, on? Oh, yeah. It was like the sun would be coming up. Like, what are we? You, you'd want to quit and you didn't realize oh you know we could just quit but <laughs> somebody would be like, everything in the hat but somebody would be like there's still ones in the hat <laughs> whoever's parents hated them the most that week <laughs> i don't want to go home yet <laughs> so <laughs> always me oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh do you have some trivia for me I have some, uh, I didn't get to do a lot of research because I was stuck in traffic on the uh, cross Bronx. Sure. But here's a, a question that you might be able to answer. Yeah. Uh, Billy Joel received the Kennedy Center honors from which president? Oh, yeah. I remember him receiving that. It was Obama. It was Obama. Yeah, it was. He was president for a while. Yeah, who else was, because that year, the whole thing was, is her name Mazes, Mabels, Maples, or the soul uh, gospel -y singer? Mavis Staples? Was it Mavis Staples that year too? Was it? Santana, it was Carlos Santana. Okay. Shirley MacLaine. Shirley MacLaine. Herbie Hancock. Oh, uh, Herbie Hancock, yeah. And? Some opera singer. <laughs> Wait, I have two notifications from Seamless, you guys. Oh, there's pizza on the way. There's gonna be a pizza, guys. And that that will mean Alex will say goodnight to us and go eat a pizza with his lovely lady who is uh Sue, who's fantastic. Yes, um, and loves pizza. Yeah. And yeah. other things that hurt my stomach. <laughs> like Indian food. Oh and I punching me. She also likes punching me, which also hurts my stomach. Yeah. Well, because you're always on tequila going, I can't even feel this. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had to be a big shot. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, this picture, I'm like, it's a it's a pretty good clue. I'll be amazed if you get it without a lot of hints, but I'll let you look at these fellas. Oh my God. I can't even. I wish I could blow this up. I, whatever's happening is happening in the 1980s, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the shoulder pads. Are we Backstreets? Are we a boy band? Uh, better Two than a boy band, for sure. They are, um, I, I think it's pretty obvious from, well, oh, I can't point at it properly, because. Uh, but anyway, I think it's pretty clear from that guy's hat. Yeah. What country they're probably from. Oh, is this Madness? Yeah. Is that the band Madness? It is. I'm I, awesome. I can't believe I got that. Yeah. Um, they did that song, Our House. They did. And I bet you'd enjoy it for listening to it for a certain amount of time. <laughs> Like a few minutes? Yeah, something like that. A few seconds? Yeah. In our house? A few seconds in our house? We're in our house. For, we're home for a little bit. Um, yeah. You might, another song by theirs, you could enjoy for an amount of time. Sure. I can't think of another song by them. Yeah, but you don't necessarily have to. I'm just saying you'd probably enjoy Oh, I see. A little madness. You might enjoy some madness for a while. You might. <laughs> you may be right. I think I am. Oh, yeah, I'm, 
I'm impressed how quickly you got that because uh, oh, God. I, I like the band Madness and I couldn't pick them out in a lineup because I just like yeah. the music. Um, Sue really likes the band Madness. They're Do great. If she could recognize them, she would recognize them. I think it's. I think they might be wearing the outfits from the video, so that might have helped. Yeah, yeah, I think so because I think, I think you know he's wearing that skinny tie. Lord, that skinny tie. That's so funny. <laughs> what a dumbass tie! Just what a <laughs> dumbass tie that is. I like that there was a genre of music that required a different shape of tie. <laughs> um, yeah, they're new uh, wave ska, right? Hello. I just opened it. We got the pizzas in the building. Pizzas in the building, everybody. Um, so that was a great, we got to, first of all, we got down to business quicker because you're hungry. Yes, because I was very, because <laughs> I was late. Which always helped. And uh, I'm impressed that you got madness. That's really great. Uh, <laughs> um, and I think I got the trivia question. Ah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, you did. Right. We, uh, we aced this episode. I believe I watched that, because I do like the Kennedy Center Honors a lot. I like it. I think I find it very. Yeah. And I like, and I, by the way, I knew, you know what, in a way, if I thought about it, there's no way it could have been Trump because he was never invited. Right. It was like Meatloaf and uh, Ted Nugent. Yeah. He was never <laughs> invited to the Kennedy Center on this. Or right. he either, or he didn't want to go, I guess. I don't know. But. Yeah. I think he didn't want to do any of the things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, like governing for example you didn't care for that so yeah, much. Not, not a great thing all right so uh what are we doing next week alex no here's what just happened to me is i thought of a song i want to do and i can't remember if we've done it already oh that's fun i've had that problem yeah pizza's here so right now alex is going to get the pizza from the door so this is what uh new yorkers call delivery uh, delivery is when they bring the pizza to your house as opposed to you going to the restaurant to pick it up so there he has that's it's in a box you'll see often they'll put it in a container for you instead of just handing it to you in a sack or something right it's, it won't look good on camera but oh Ooh, actually you know i think it does kind of look pretty good i bet it looks even better in person that's the sausage and sweet onion, baby. Oh my goodness! That's how they do it in the Motor City. <laughs> I'm gonna put this in the kitchen, and then I'll tell you what's on. So he's putting this in another room, uh, so that he can eat it after. So now, only touched the outside of the box. Can you see how shiny my hand is with so grease? Great. So while you were <laughs> while you were grabbing the pizza, I was explaining to the viewers in case they didn't know how delivery works. Oh, good. And now uh, for you kids at home, try delivery yourself. Call a place and have yeah. them bring you food. Any place. It doesn't have to be a food place. That's true. You can you have, have it. Call Woolworths <laughs> and ask for a turkey sandwich. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then uh, report back. Have we done pressure? I don't think we have. Which is crazy. Yeah. Let's talk about the song Pressure. Yes. And then um, I'll tell a quick story of the first time I heard You May Be Right. Ah. I heard it on an album, not by Billy Joel, but by the Chipmunks. It's the first time I heard it. And the name of the album, which made people mad at the time, if you can imagine people getting mad at something of the chipmunks, it was called Chipmunk Punk. You know, punk rock. Yeah. And one of the yeah. songs was You May Be Right by noted punk rocker Billy Joel. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they he mentioned the electric chair. That's true. That 
So were the chipmunks singing about this woman in her electric chair? Yes. Great. The best part of the song is there's a saxophone, but it also sounds like it's chipmunk saxophone because it's real high. <laughs> and it still makes me laugh because Alvin, who sang lead, uh, Alvin, at one point, the he goes, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless him. Still makes me laugh. Uh, so <laughs> Garth Brooks and Alvin, Alvin have both, all both big Billy Joel fans, I guess. Yeah, I hope they hang out together and talk about it. Why wouldn't they? I remember Garth that. Garth Brooks, by the way. Uh... <laughs> At the Kennedy Center Honors, where Billy Joel received his Kennedy Center honor, uh, Garth Brooks gave the toast. That makes perfect sense. I hope, by the way, there's a, Alvin did a, a album on his own with a, under a fake name. <laughs> like a Chris Gaines thing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> still, there's just still a chipmunk bill. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna let Alex go eat his pizza. Uh, I am very grateful to everybody for listening and uh, we will talk to you next week.